Good against Evil, it's a tough matchup for the Goblin Faction, let me tell you that much. But keep in mind that every player has the chance to dodge one single time. Falcon is building up a Malone 3 into the second Malone 3. Swan, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your sleep. Welcome. Appreciate it. And we have two tunnels opening for the Goblin player. You should try attack on Titan. Really? I mean... I, if I'm being honest with you, I have like zero time left, Gem Studios, to play any game I want. I wanted to play multiple games, but it's... Look, I, I have a child. My second child is on his way. You know, June, I will have a son. Let's go. And uh, yeah, I'm married. I have a job. I'm streaming a lot, making YouTube videos. And then I have literally minus two hours left. And in this minus two hours, I choose to sleep. Uh, two Malone trees, barracks into the third Malone tree. On the other side, we see two three tunnels into the Goblin Cave coming up for Andy Brandy. Congrats, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. What Kimi Nawa Nana wa best? What Kimi Nana wa? Never heard about it, to be honest. Did you guys also hear about the anime which is called One Punch Man? I think that was like a meta thing, right? Everybody was watching. Everybody was watching them. Every one of my friends is like, "Hey, you need to watch One Punch Man. It's so awesome. You will like it." But I never watched it. Goblin Cave into the second Goblin Cave. On the other side, we see Barracks into the Pikeman opening for Falcon. So Falcon is trying or assuming to creep the Vork layer. We can also, you know, see the placement. That's the placement you want to go for. And the creep should be uncontested. And that's like an OG opening for the Goblin Faction. Three Goblin Caves to rule them all. If Goblins can achieve like a great push at the beginning of the game, the snowballing effect is very similar to the Dwarven Faction. But in order to get there, you need to actually get like a great opening off, you know? You need to have like a strong start. Then you can build multiple tunnels and then keep pressuring all the time. It's short, easy watch, really? Break it down. I think the voices from the from the things are kinda I am the Dark Lord. I am the Dark Lord. Oh uh, we, we hear goblins dying. Uh, where, where, where? Oh, but he's coming now for a push. How many goblins are there? I think two or three. It's hard to see uh, or see sometimes is when they are kinda inside each other. It's hard to tell how many goblins are exactly inside there, but we will see a lot more goblins coming up very, very soon. I think at this point of the game, the steel is a great call for the Alvin player, but also Alvin Arches. Where are they? Like one archer and you don't want to go. I mean, that's how you are not supposed to play against goblins, I think, as elves. You don't need to push or rush anything. You are scaling much, much harder than the goblin faction. Goblins can legit do nothing against you in long terms. And for that reason, I think when you know the meta, when you know the skilling of your faction versus the enemy faction, then you can play a little bit more defensively. Like going with the Lorian Archer forward won't achieve anything for you, right? But in the meantime, you might lose actually two or three Malone trees and that's not worth it. Rallying Call is available for elves and also Warchant is available, which is going to be used now. We have a clump of goblin warriors and boom, 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 poison arrows on their feet. The tunnel might be taken down, but that's what I'm talking about. The push you go for with like two, three battalion is going to be defended every single time. And yes, you will be able to destroy one single tunnel, but you will lose every unit plus your rallying call. And you also lost a uh, Malone tree on your, you know, yourself. I don't think it's a very important push. And now the goblins didn't lose too many units in this, in this fight. And they will definitely go for a counter push. And you won't have that much to defend yourself. Half Troll Swordman is not happening any, anytime soon. We have also no Spider Pit coming up anytime, anytime soon for the Goblin player. I think Spider Pit could be actually a great call for um, the Goblin player. Any Brandy, he's tr you know, trying to creep both the layers at the bottom right and also top left side. He should be able to get it done uncontested. He has so many Goblins upon the field. Remember, they cost a little bit more than Orc Warriors. They cost also a little bit more Command Points than Orc Warriors. They cost uh, 40. Orcs cost only 30. The creep is going to be uncontested. Easy peasy, boys. Goblins have the control of this game so far, I would say. The Spider Pit is finally building up. The Spiderlings are actually a great counter unit to the enemy cavalry. And also great for harassment. And uh, for me personally, I 
don't like those spider riders. I think they are either dealing little to no damage or they are just too squishy. For a unit that costs that much money, I don't like them that much. They cost more than the Lancers. And the thing that really impressed me about these games is the huge number of units on each side. You don't, you don't make units one at a time. Um, yeah, that's also one of the major differences between give me one in, in Rise of the Witch King. It's like a spamming. Spamming all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have plenty of different op opportunities because you have no limitations in terms of buildings. You can build anywhere you want. You can legit build like a barracks here at the beginning of the game and you keep pressuring all the time, you know? Which gives you obviously much more freedom. While Beef Me 1 has like restrictions, like limitations, and limitations in terms of your possibilities. You don't have many more options, unlike you would have, for example, in Beef Me 2 and in Rise of the Witch King. Seven power points in the bank. Trampling is incoming. Nice trample here from Falcon. He doesn't ride into the, into the middle. But you can see the pressure is real. Many, many, many goblins coming from everywhere. And they will be now even stronger with the Spider Riders coming up very soon. Yes, two of these power expansions or 300 more command points just like that to increase from 600 to 750 and elves are down to 550 command points i mean the command points differential isn't that big if you count these two battle expansions away and elves are kind of defending those themselves i would recommend to build even a second well to speed up the recovery progress because one well literally needs like ages to build up we need pikemen definitely at this point of the game we will defend the elven lands, but we need to defend this land first. The Malone tree is under attack from two goblin warriors, three goblin warriors. They will be slowly but surely taking it down. The second barracks is coming up now for the elven player. I think an investment into a hero like Haldir early on could also be incredibly impactful. Haldir gets to level 5 in literally no time. Yes, healing effect stack. So if you have like two wells, they will heal up faster. If you have three wells, Lorian they will even archers, heal up faster. Lorian archers, ready for battle. Oh, but the spider riders, dude, they were unlucky. They were riding directly into the pikemen. And that's punishment. Like, they are so expensive. And keep in mind that evil factions have no recovery possibility. So goblins, they legit have to build the armory to get the banner purchase. Unlike, for example, Mordor, which can buy banner carry upgrade from... Uh, orc pit or unlike Engmar which can do that from the Hall of the Kingsmen goblins have to build the armory we bring spears from Mifflons. we bring spears from Mifflons. and Turkushi thanks for the 100 bitty bomb my friend appreciate it really means a lot thank you thank you hello dear ring fellowship hello dear ring fellowship appreciate it man thanks for 100 they will crush us. 11 power points collected after the rallying call. 10 of them is going to be invested into the inch rotting mist, which is like an OG pick. And I think it's the most solid and most reliable pick as the 10 power point if you have only the rallying call beforehand, because it will lead you later on to the Eagle Special Summon. Eagle Special Summon, I would say in most situations, unless you have like a huge lead and you want to close the game off with like an end Special Summon, Eagles are just much, much better, especially against Goblin Faction, because they are horrible when it comes to deal with flying heroes. Like, in order to kill, like, two eagles, you will need, like, ten spider riders. You know what I'm saying? With, like, poison arrows. But until then, they will eventually kill multiple level three tunnels or a lot of units from you in return. You see, they are not very good, man. Why is, why is he disengaging? Just keep fighting here. They're gonna die to archers, by the way. Yeah. That's 600 gone into the garbage. And elves are, you know, you do see, you see this countering... In, there is one thing about the goblin faction i believe they have like three different hardcore import not impossible but really insanely difficult matchups and this is one of them in my opinion you know maybe some people disagree they say yeah nah goblins can win maybe they can win on a map like jungles of Farad. but the closer the map is i think the more difficult this is going to be for the goblin faction lorian archers ready for battle the second matchup is against Mordor, and the third matchup is against Engmar. So there are in total six playable factions for matchups for goblins, and three of them they struggle a lot. Would that not make them to the worst faction in the 8.5 version? Maybe. All he wants is cheat. 
After all, Swordman transition now from the fissure. Seven power points. I will stay by your side. Stay by Aragorn's side instead. Oh, I hear the Whiteman of Dunlin into the war chant, but the cavalry, the cavalry is coming. And that makes the Whiteman of Dunlin special summon, in my, open, in my opinion, to a really bad summon. Because they will get countered so incredibly hard now from the cavalry. What is he doing? Just go trample them. Tainted land. Half throw pikemen now. Arches are demolishing everything though. You see the Whiteman of Dunlin with the war chant buff, they still die like they are nothing. Too many arches, too much DPS. Too much DPS. All the spider riders, they found the opening. They found the opening. Beautiful trample is incoming now, but they are riding into the... Nice micro here from Andy Brandy. Punishment is big. Taking down half of the army of the Lorian Arches. In the meantime, the, go the Elven player is actually deciding to go for a counter-attack with the Cavalry. 625 command points versus 1,000 command points for the Goblin. 1,000, ladies and gentlemen. That's the maximum amount of command points you can have in this game. The Malone Tree is going to be found and taken down. But the thing is that Elves are really close for the Elven Special Summon of the Eagles. And the Eagles, once again, are actually important <laughs> and they are devastating. Like, there are like level 2, level 2, level 2 tunnels here. And they might be, every one of them might be taken down. However, there is one thing about the Goblin Faction. If you choose to buy and build up those the Arrow lands. Den expansion towers around your fortress, they are building up so incredibly fast. Right, you can get them in like 5 seconds and you can kill the Eagles. But we will see the Eagles very, very soon. Very, very soon. There is a level 2 tunnel at the bottom side. I think that's the main reason why he has like 1000 command points in the bank. Arvin is here level 3, level 6, unlocks the flat, which got a couple of hardcore nerves. Arvin wants to cheat on Aragorn with Shanks. <laughs> yeah. I wish. <laughs> we bring spears from Mithlant. We bring spears from Mithlant. 15 power points. Turn them into the Eagles already, my friend. 8 power points only for the Goblin player. So he's still like, what, 7 power points and a quarter away from his own Watcher special summon. Watcher, there comes the Eagle boys. You see this uh, mirror ring on the on the on the water? It looks actually pretty nice. The eagles, the eagles are coming. They will be actually summoned to kill units. Hmm. I think at this point you need to kind of use them. And Turkish, once again, thanks for the hundred bitty bomb. Like they say in Turkish, Saruman and Kuyunu sonra sakar oyunu in English. Saruman sheep might be Shiite. Ha ha ha. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, uh, what? Saruman and Koyunu, Sonra Chikar Oyunu. I've never seen or heard anybody in Turkish saying that. Saruman and maybe I don't know. I think maybe it's a region. A region. <laughs> Dude, that was unexpected. By the way, thank you so much for the hundred bits, man. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. Elves are everywhere. The Eagles, though, they are going down now because of the towers. Eleven power points collected. Still far away from the Watcher. And until you get the Watcher, I think it's going to be kind of... Uh, yeah. Oh, he was even going for a scavenger now. That's going to slow him down even, even further, right? He's going to drop down a lot in the power points department. So if the game should last like 10 more minutes... The elves can legit go for the flat after 15 power Orion points. Ready for you know? battle. And the goblins, they can never keep up with the speed anymore. So, all the elven player has to do is just save up for the flat and play for the lead game. Flat, in this situation, dude, can you imagine here flat? You kill all the production buildings with one single ability. Okay, 675 in the bank. The Malone tree level 2 is going to be eventually taken down. Slowly but surely. Yes, sir. Or, that's going to be close. I think he's going to take it down, right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, goblins have still a lot of map control, though. Look at that. Would you look at that? We see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tunnels at the bottom side. We see 2 tunnels at the top side. 3 tunnels, actually. But there is an elven army you've got to take care of. Arvin is level 4. Oh, Lance is going down though to the Haradrim, or not Haradrim, half throw pikemen. Okay. 
Is this on T3A servers? No, Bill Ghost. Uh, that's not being the case. I mean, I would say that 95% people, 95 of the people using or playing the games online are using the Game Ranger application. So, T3A is outdated and it's kind of buggy and laggy and it's not working. I mean, I was trying to use it in the past, but it's just like painful. I cannot connect to people I can normally connect. So, I don't want to go now, open my router and trying to disable this and enable this and open this port. I am too lazy for that. In Game Ranger, it's much, much easier. You can let it in the background, you can host a room, start everything in one single click. And for me, it's still the best possible way to connect with others and play with others. And yes, it's still getting patches. But again, you know, the games are abandoned. It means there is no official sport anymore for these games. And everything in BFME games, BFME 1, 2 and Rise of the Witch King is, ma is made fan, you know, it's like a fan made patch versions you know here for example we are on the on, a, on a, an official patch 2.02 uh, but it's like around now for many many years it is up to version 8.5 it is the most used patch um but it's not from ea games it's it's made from players for players you know 10 power points collected after the weapon of talent summon and the elven player is up to 20 power points boys so five more power points to go five more power points to go Having to open ports, yeah. And you don't even know because there is like zero instru instructions. And I literally was trying to connect there, but it was like painful. And I gave up like a couple of hours later. I will definitely stick up to Game Ranger, you know what I'm saying? It's like so much easier. I'm hurt. Oh, I'm hurt. <laughs> Sorry, Arvin. I she was screaming in my ear, like, Shanks, I'm hurt. Shanks, help me. Okay, girl, I'm coming. Look. I'm coming right to me, right to me, right to the east. I will protect the lands of Rivendell. I will protect the lands of Rivendell. The Malone tree is gonna be saved. 900 command points for elves too, and 1000 still, but the thing is, he has not many units on the field. And I, I don't think the goblins can turn this game around anymore. I was using back in the day T3A to leg a game range a much lower delay at, at least. I, I, I cannot confirm or deny that about leggy. But it was for me the connection issues I had, you know? Like, one day I remember, like many, many years ago, a couple of friends of mine and me, because back in the day, playing something like the HD edition, for example, or playing like some special editions were not, was not possible on Game Ranger. Because uh, T3A was sporting them. And we were like, okay, let's try to play this mod on T T3A. And uh, we were trying to connect to each other. Dude, it was nightmare was not working 26 power points collected the flat is available boys so pick up the flat use it right here holy moly the flat here would be so amazing maybe even here i don't know if you can actually aim it like this you can you can i believe take down at least this two what is better guys what do you guys think Lorian killing Archers, this four for or killing this three what we would you kill right now this land. three or this four i think this three are better oh what he goes for a why? I mean, getting the fortress, I guess, is the better option. <laughs> okay. Did the end just miss the fortress? The watcher. But that's so bad. You know, I don't know, man. If he loses the ends, that's going to slow him down so much. And he might lose them to the spider riders eventually. They will crush us. If, if he loses one of them. Oh my goodness, the cold. Dude, the Watcher was horrible too, though. Imagine Watcher now, guys. The Watcher was horrible. Come on now, why would you rush it like that? Imagine Watcher now on this spot, you know? It would be so much better. I mean, this is not gonna kill the Fortress, by the way. Let me tell you, he has armor on the Fortress now. This, in my opinion, was a bad call. This was a bad call. Tell me whatever you want. The Alvin Wood is a bad call. In the end, are even worse call. That's going to... You had 29 power points. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? 123 for killing them, by the way, because of pillage. I mean, this is still... I mean, don't get me wrong. This is still not looking good for goblins. But 
I think the Elven faction player had, had the chance to win this game. Horses. I think so. Two thousand nine hundred nine fifty. And yeah, the, the the PowerPoints department is actually kind of even, I would say. And you know what? Every minute that the game lasts longer, the scavenger is going to pay off, right? Even though he doesn't have that much map control. I mean, again, goblins can actually build those battle expansions to get map control. He has still like level three tunnel here. He's getting a lot of money and scavenger is giving him additional resources. But very soon, Falcon, the Turkish player, the Elven player will be able to summon the Eagles for the second time. So the second time, Eagles will be special summoned. The Fortress is still almost full HP. And I think committing against the Fortress would be up, a, a risky Gorian move. Um, because battle. it has armor, right? You cannot we take it down fast enough. 15 power points. I mean, what you can do, and I think that would be the best call here, is wait with the Eagle special summon until we have flood. The second you have flat, you can use flat here to kill eventually this two and then the expansions or damage the fortress. Then you can use after the flat the eagle special summon and then take the fortress with your Glorfinder or something. Because he has Glorfinder level 3, so you can get into the melee range, use the plate of purity, use the eagle special summon after the flat, and this might be enough to take it down. I mean, goblins have still a level... Can you imagine that? He has still a level 3 tunnel after such a long time untouched i mean not untouched but it's the remaining on the field that's unbelievable kill it already man that's why he has still 950 command points even though the map is full red but he has so many tunnels untouched for whatever reason level level 2 tunnel here almost level 3 for example feature is level 1 both of them um to put, yeah the thing is cave trolls are bad against elves the fire drakes are also bad against elves you know like, that's what I'm talking about. In long terms, I think the goblins can't really do much against elves. Maybe scavenge armor can make those half throws Wardman tanky enough, but... Yeah. You see the problematic here? You see the dilemma here, guys? I think this is like a tough matchup if you cannot get a huge lead early on. I mean... Does he have flat yet? No. But really close. Is he gonna summon the Eagles? Please don't tell me he's gonna summon the Eagles. I think summoning the Eagles would be a bad call here from Falcon. We come from oh, he has the little flat. Little flat. I, I don't think it's worth it. I gotta be honest. Like, what do you want you wanna kill here? Level 1 tunnels? What do you guys think about this Eagle special summon? Is it really worth it? We will defend the Elven lands. We will defend the Elven lands. <sighs> Uh, power points? Yeah, goblins have 16 power points. Smoky. So goblins still need like 9 power points. Oh, but level 3. Okay, that's good. That's good. Taking down the level 3 is actually pretty good. Because now all of... Actually, he's still at 1000 command points. What? Nah, he's at 900 command points. Sorry. The eagles, they will go down slowly but surely. 18 power points collected. But the elven player has 24 power points collected. So the flood is going to be definitely available sooner than the balrog or the dragon. Build. Destroy. Tunnel is coming up. What a fiesta game, dude. How is this possible that this goblin play is still not defeated? I don't get it. What is going on? Yes, flat. Yes, sir. Yes, flat. The eagle is going to be gone very soon. Yes. But in the meantime, the Malone Twin. Oh, yes, Mirkwoods, finally. Can you imagine after this long time, he finally gets some Mirkwoods upon the field? Flood is available, and boom, Flood, wash the evil away from this lands. Holy moly, guys. And that's why Flood is so busted. For me, one of the best 25 power points low-key. The reason is you cannot mess it up, you know what I'm saying? The dragon, the Balrog, everything that you summon can be destroyed or can be taken down. But we bring how can you Flood. take down Flood? You can't. <laughs> there is no counter. 24 power points though. I mean, the question is, can 25 power point from the goblin faction player, you know, can this do something for Andy Brandy? That is the golden question. I'm I mean, the layout is good. We ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days. Yeah. Why can't we have some meats? Yeah, why can't we have some meats? Marcid, welcome to the stream. 
Avalanche. Yeah, Avalanche is also pretty good. Earthquake is pretty good. Like everything, but you can but you should not summon. Right? 25 power points. 26 power points. Oh, finally, our hero, Azok, level one. <laughs> Dude, like one hour in the game, but he's recruiting Azok now. Are you kidding me? 27 power points. What is the goal? What is the plan? Yes, Watcher almost back up too. He's winning the fight in the middle too. I don't know how, but he's winning them. The Milkwoods are not even in position and they are feeding so much money and because of the pillage, right? Look, look watch this. Plus 14 every time you kill them. And he gets that from Scavenger all the time. So killing those units is like they're having resource buildings for the Goblin player. Even though he has not this many ro uh, you know, resource buildings upon the field, but he's getting so much value from the Scavenger. He has this now under his control for a long time. And ladies and gentlemen, the Summon Dragon is available and unlocked. Now the question, and that's the golden question. How much damage can Andy Brandy deal with the Summon Dragon to the Turkish player Falcon? I mean, we know the Summon Dragon got nerfed. He is still one of the best power points in the entire game. Crazy splash damage, area damage. You summon him here, you attack the barracks, you attack the barracks, the Malone 3 level 3 at the same time. I want to see that. I want to know. What is he waiting for, though? What is he waiting for? You can use Tainted Land and use it, or Cave Pets and use it. Seven power points collected. The damage got nerfed. Baku. The damage it deals got nerfed. Glorfindel is back on the menu, boys. The flat is on cooldown for Arvin. Arvin is actually level 7. Azok has been taken down, that's unfortunate. The Watcher is about is gonna be ready in about what 15 seconds. Let us go. Land and Dragon, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Land and Dragon. Or go for cave pets and dragon if you don't want to waste your land. Because he might save the land just in case the Alvin player might use his own Alvin wood or something, you know? What is he doing? We bring up finest bows. The end special dude, look at the power points. I think we're gonna unlock eventually every single power point from the game. Marsit, thank you so much for the Risa for the second man. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Marsid7 just resubscribed for two months. Ahoy. Back on the ship. Back on the ship. Once a crewmate, a crewmate, always a crewmate. Thank you, thank you. I mean, he's camping here I with the with the team. archers. Oh. <laughs> Dude, what is this Fiesta game? I don't know. Is he actually waiting for the 25 for the Balrog? Is he gonna try to summon them at the same time? Or what is what is going on? Like, I don't get it. I mean, the Alvin player might also go for the... Um, can he not go for the, um, for the Cloud Break? Or is he gonna see for the 25 and go for the Sunflare? Maybe. I think Sunflare could be also quite nice. So Sunflare can also deal damage to buildings, but also one-shot the enemy the army. Oh, I hear Glorfindel screaming. And yes, 167 for killing Glorfindel, guys. 167. And this game is never gonna end. What is going on? Hey, guys, let me tell you that much. The Goblin player has now more command points as we are talking than the Alvin player. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? How is this even possible? Like mistakes, you see the snowballing effect of the mistakes. The mistakes are leading to more and more mistakes. And now all of a sudden, I dare to say, but Alvin player is losing. Alvin player is losing this game. Yes, the end special summon. I mean, the question is, what can he do now with the Sun Flare? Sun Flare and then eventually the end special summon combination. Is this gonna be enough? Keep in mind that this fortress has armor. So you cannot really burst it down, right? And look at this map control at the bottom side. Four tunnels. He's pushing now from this area. He might even go for the armory very soon. Yes, sir. He has armory here. Yes, the level two. Level three is needed for the scavenge armor. That's gonna make those half throw swordsmen, half throw pikemen so extremely tanky that you will that you would need leadership and also you would need um silver ton arrows and keep in mind that all game long falcon the alvin player did not recruit his haldir which is the easiest way for the alvin faction to get leadership unlocked and no elrond either right so no leadership at all no upgrades at all he's kind of broke he's kind of poor oh the, but the sun flayers are available 
So Sun Flare ends. Okay, now. Now that's gonna be a very important momentum we need we to kind of pay attention to. But the dragon at the end is like, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> what am I watching, dude? What is this? What is happening? No, 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 no. We will defend the elven lands. Don't let your kids watch it. I mean, there comes the dragon, boys. Hocus pocus, bibidi babidi boo. And the dragon is doing his thing, roasting everything. You sunflare on him or something. I don't know, man. Dude. Nerf, by the way. He's nerfed. Arvin is coming for the floods. I don't, I don't want to miss this. Oh, the sunflare. A random sun flare, like a tilt sun flare. The dragon is still not done. Or oh, what is he doing with the mid woods? Is he gonna die also with the mid woods? There is no way. Guys, how is this freaking possible? How is this possible that goblins could win this game? Can somebody explain me, please? What are we building? This is over, guys. This game is over. The goblins won this game. GG's gonna be called from Falcon. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. What is going on, really? I mean, I'm very confused. <laughs> we have the red Isengard player. Down on the top side. These are Orokai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. What's the most worst mirror match? The most boring one, I think, is is the Elven faction mirror. And you know, the most boring is also the worst Elven mirror matchup. Will always end in end games. So basically. You will have to build end moods and then it will be like an archer fight and then until ends come and you cannot kill the ends <laughs> you know ends will throw rock, rock each other all the time and all you all your army has to do is be like a shield wall of human human or elven flash and protect your ends that's it two furnaces into the work pit opening into the third furnace on the other side we see two furnaces uruk pit opening into the third furnace coming up for the red Isengard player. So Falcon going for this classical, traditional Uruk Pit opening. And um, any Brandy is building up the Warp Pit. I think Warp Pit is actually quite great start into the into the game for the Isengard. Because the Warp Packs, they are cost efficient. They cost less than Uruks. They are fast. They are good for harassment. And also they give you the chance to pick up the Creepine. as the opening spell and not the War Chant. Hey Deadwood, glad to see you in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. Good night, my friend. I don't know how guys can we can you let me please know in the in the chat what is the hour in your country? How late is it in your country? I mean I am living in Germany, it's right now for me almost midnight. And how late is it in your place? In Turkey, there is like two hours differential in this case in Turkey, right? And zero high is one hour behind or in front of me, like or behind me, yeah. Darkness is also from Turkey in this case. So that's actually weird in Turkey and Germany sometimes, because sometimes it's like one hour difference, sometimes it's like two hours difference in Turkey into Germany. But it's afternoon, it's evening for you, Deadwood. It's 8, uh, it's 6.38, okay. Oh, we have the same o'clock in this case, my friend, Molok. 2 a.m., Ali. Which country are you from, if I may ask? It's Fiesta time, is it? Yes, sir. Good night, teammate. Have a good sleep, my friend. All ability will be used on this. On this. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. You don't want to be in the media range, my friends. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Now they can just turn, and that's the thing. Use bombard. Use bombard. In a situation like that, in which you don't want to go into the media range, you want to use bombard. Because look what's gonna happen if you go into the media range. They will just turn on you and take care of your crossbow man, and that's bad. Because crossbowmen are more expensive than warp packs. So losing them in this situation is bad. Really, really bad. He's creeping at the same time. And it's now a second... Uh, um, oh, this kid actually is looking horrible. Horrible, horrible for... For Falcon. He lost the full crossbowman battalion. That means he has zero defense now for the furnace. This furnace has also zero defense. He's now building up the clan sitting. But you need pikemen. Why no pikemen? The pikemen are not, are not in position. He lost the crossbowman also. Already he lost... Yeah, he lost them also to this one. This battalion is gonna hit level 2. That's like minus 700 in the bank. 
He's going even for the third crossbow man, but he will lose two furnaces while in the brain he is untouched. And you see the opening of the uh, Vault Pit is so good. And what can Clan Sitting do against that? The answer is nothing. Because very soon, instead of Vork Packs, Andy Brandy will get the chance to recruit some Vork Riders. And they will smash your Wildman of Dunland. Only one Pikeman, but they did already a lot of job here. And he has in total three of them. Now the Uruks are coming. After the first couple of minutes, Falcon is at one power point, And Andy Brandy is at two power points. 400 command points versus 300 command points. So 300 command points and he's gonna call it GG. I knew it. I mean, that's like, that's the thing, you know, if you mess up early on at the beginning of the game, you will fall behind so fa fast against good players, they know how to snowball their lead into the victory. And that's exactly what happened. Good against evil. That's what we like to see. We have the red Engmar player, Falcon at the bottom side, versus the blue Man of the West player and the Brandy at the left side. Good against evil, the clash. Two mills coming up for Engmar and one mill into the early barracks coming up for Falcon, the... For Andy Brandy, the Man of the West player. Uh, Shanks, what do you work for? I'm working for myself, my friend. I mean, what are you doing for a living? I'm that's when this your when this is your question, I'm actually sales manager. So basically I'm responsible in a region uh, of Germany for the sales of a company. Early barracks into the pikeman opening and they have two mills hall of the kingsman so now somebody told me it was ghost boy in the chat he told me that falcon doesn't like to play engmar at all so with that being said i'm assuming that's gonna be a tough matchup for the turkish player and that's also one of the downsides you know normally we have different formats in every tournament sometimes we actually have like a faction specific tournament in which you are able to sign up with a faction and play with the one faction only for the entire tournament. We call these this tournaments like a faction championship. We had already one of these to host a couple of, uh, like one year ago. It was also pretty fun. But there is a downside. It means we will have to watch eventually eight games in a row, somebody playing dwarves. And that's okay, fine, that's fine. But there is also a chance that his opponent is also picking dwarves. It means we might have to watch eventually five to seven games, even nine games in the grand finals, a Dwarven Mirror match. In terms of entertaining, in terms of seeing diversity in the tournament, the, the random pick is just much more fun. Easy creeping action. He will also be able to capture this in, which for the Man of the West faction means you will be able to recruit those Galadrim warriors, the Alvin warriors with sword and shield, with sword and bow. The Gundabad orcs are leading forward. Uh, does he know though? Nah, he doesn't know. He's going to just go to this top side. So no vision on the creep and the money I speak will... with the Witch King's voice. I speak with the Witch King's voice. The money will be secured by any brandy. He will actually indeed capture this one. Which is actually early on when you have when you, you know at the beginning of the game, I think the Galadrim warriors can actually do a great job. It means you don't have to build the archer range to recruit archers, you know? Oh, one soldier, but the wolf them just in time. Turn them into the wolf riders, yes, sir. Trample them now, trample them down. Ready for battle. Old crown plus shield fall, that's gonna make them tanky. They can now absorb lots of trample damage. So I believe the wolf riders, they need to trample like three, four times now, or maybe five times. Uh, but sometimes you go for a flank damage. The flank damage is actually randomly. That's nothing you can really influence yourself a lot. And when you go for a flank damage, you can even one-shot pikemen without taking any damage in return. Warchan is going to be available now on this Gundabad Orcs. We'll be using it right off the bat. And yeah, the farm is going to be taken down. There is only one soldier remaining. He's going to use on the one soldier rallying coal. But yeah, smart move here from Falcon. He's splitting them. The farm is going to be his primary target. The stable. The Gondor Knights are a little bit too late. And I think the rallying coal was kind of unnecessary. I think. Hey, be careful with Trailmaster. Trailmaster, be careful. I am the Fist of Angmar. I'm the Fist of Angmar, all you want. No Galadrim warriors yet, but he has one of them on his way. The wolf packs are coming on the field very, very soon. 400 command points versus 350. Man of the West actually lost a lot. 
and couldn't deal any damage in return. And that's the power of Engmar early on. The transition force ability you get kind of surprised the man of the West play a lot. And also a very risky move from, uh, from any Brandy to send out only one single soldier battalion. How, what can the soldier battalion do against Engmar alone? Might need to creep now. He is actually... I mean, the good thing is he was getting money from the creep, right? That's the good thing. He has now also Galadrim warriors on the field. The bad thing about them is they, they cost a lot. They cost 400 each, right? 400 plus 72 command points. That's a lot of money investment early on. Oh, be careful what you're doing. Oh, nice micro just in the last possible sec. Look at the pressure, though. Look at the wolves. The wolves are coming, boys. The wolf packs, the wolf riders. That's the mobility power of the Engmar faction from the troll and wolf then. And the thing is, that's the only army that has like a mobile counter for enemy pikemen. So at some point of the game, if you want to have some tankier pikemen, you need to recruit the tower guards. The farm has been taken down. Galadrim warriors are shooting from a safe distance. Now he needs to deal some damage in return. Yeah, the farm is going down, there is no chance. And yeah, you, what are you doing with the pikemen? What can they do? Oh, 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 trauma master, trauma master, trauma master, trauma master. Oh no, that's so painful, dude. That's so painful. Yeah, that's the downside of the trauma master units, you know? You need to be careful about the white guy. If the leader of the trauma master dies, or the trauma master is called actually dies, then you lose the full battalion. That's why I believe in this matchup, as men, you can also recruit heroes like Elma or Elvin and target the trial master from the battalion i don't think elma can one shot them but elvin can definitely one shot them so you can target this guy behind and if you kill him the full battalion is going to be gone and you can do that over and over again okay the in the vibe of the end will be purchasable now for engmar oh that trample Nice one from Andy. Nice one. Can he take it down though? I think so. Rallying call is going to be used. Beautiful trample is incoming. The pikemen were not in position. A lot of them got knocked down on the ground. But I think he can still do it eventually. The pikemen need to get in position to defend those soldiers. One more trample. He's actually microing very well with the wolf riders. But the mill has been taken down anyway. Only because of the soldiers were getting buffed from the rallying call. The good thing is for Engman now that he has the buff advantage. Now you gotta make something happen. Now you need to go for a counter-attack and use your own war chant to deal as much damage as you potentially can. We have 500 command points um, in total for Engmar and 575 for Andy Brandy, the man of the West player. Cool hour for stream. I mean, not really. <laughs> Normally I don't stream this lead, as you know, Max. But um, in order to make progress in the tournament, and also I cannot stream tomorrow, I wanted to stream so we can get some progress done and move eventually very very soon to the quarterfinals. Because one of the rules is that every game in the round of 16 has to be played on stream. And you know, it's hard, I know. We have obviously a small community and people, they have like different lives. Nobody is playing Rise of the Witch King for a living. Some people are working in the early, you know, some people are shifting, they have no time during the day. Some people have different time zones. They are coming from US. The other ones are coming from Europe. So it's hard to schedule games. And for that reason, you gotta make some sacrifices. Yes, yes. I need to I need to wake up, actually. I need to wake up in like six hours from now. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. It's no problemo. It's like, you know, exceptions. Engmar is actually doing not a bad job in this game number 3 against any Brandy. 575 command points for Engmar and 575 command points for Man. 9 power points collected and 10 power points collected for Engmar. So Engmar will have the chance very soon to summon the additional Orc summon. And with that, maybe you can go for a massive push. However, you want to make sure that you have some pikemen around. As we are talking, in this game so far, we have not seen any hero. No Voldor, no Elma, no Tyrion, no Eowyn, no Boromir. I think Boromir could be a very good hero in this matchup. Maybe even Elma could be a nice hero to support those Gondonites. Because the enemy pikemen from the Traumaster are actually pretty weak. That you can even 
trample them if you have double buff. If you have rallying call plus elma leadership, you can even trample them. You won't die. More meals are coming up. Wolf Tan is level 1. Level 2 actually, okay? Will he recruit some heal trolls or snow trolls? That's the big question. Snow trolls are such a cool unit too. Engmar is pushing from the bottom and also from the top side. Man is surrounded. Double barracks in one steeple. Level 1. And no tower guards, no archers, no rangers, nothing. You are Spanish? Yes, Max is Spanish. You, you know, how you know that somebody is Spanish? And for me, what I've noticed myself, if somebody is Spanish, but they are, what they like to type is this one, guys. They like to type this. I don't know if they also talk like that in real life, but it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine Max, you know, sitting there, yeah, 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 yeah. The build has been taken down, by the way. Build has been taken down from any brand. This actually, even though Falcon doesn't like to play Engma, but he plays Engma the best from all the games so far. I mean, this is looking extremely good for the red Engma player. I gotta be honest. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's ha ha ha. Okay. Ah, look at this. But this is okay. So why are you laughing always then? Ha 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 ha. Dude, Spanish people. But Spanish girl on the other side. I don't know about Max, but I want to know about, you know, Beyonce and stuff like this. Not Beyonce. Beyonce is not Spanish, but, you know, like, Spanish woman? The, the Latinas, you know, Latinas. Guys, I, I gotta be honest. Earlier, when I was going to the disco and to the club, when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, it's because, you know, the, the Turkish people are looking also like, you know, they are also from the South countries. They, have, they are also brown. And the thing is, in Germany, they don't like Turkish people. So I was lying always, you know, when I was going to a club and some girl would ask me, hey, where are you from actually? Where are you originally from? I was like, I'm from Spain, you know? And it was working well. I was landing on many, many girls, guys. Trust me on that one, you know, they were like, come and and bueno, bueno, and stuff like this. Everything was looking good. And then I met a girl who was also asking me, where are you from? I said, from Spain. And she was from Spain herself, you know what I'm saying? So I could oops, not speak a single word Spain, Spanish. And it was Hello Darkness, my old friend, you know? Yeah, I'm telling you guys. In in Germany, Turkish boys, they don't have lots of chances on girls. Because Turkish playboys, they are messing up with the girls all the time. They are actually never, you know, ready for a relationship. They want to have like this little one night, one night stand action going on, you know? And after them, after them, they say like, hey... I will call you, trust me on that one, <laughs> but they never call again. That's why people, uh, women have like trust issues like for the for the Turkish boys, but for Latino Latinos, you know, like for the for the Spanish boys. Holy moly, guys! My name is was always Tony. If they would ask me what is your name, I was always like Tony. Tony is my name. Antonius, Tony. And uh, we have 800 command points for Engmar and 550 command points only for Men of the West. In, Sp in Spain, girls are hardly affected by idiots. I mean, why would you call yourself idiot now, Max? That's not cool, my friend. My sister had once a boyfriend from Spain and he was always saying very, very good. <laughs> very, very good. Berry. Sounds like, uh, you know, the currency from One Piece. One million berry. The farm is going to be level three. Uh, 800 command points available against 575. Snow trolls. Beautiful trample is incoming. Turkish guys hit like a truck, dude. You know, you can ask my girl, ask you can ask my ex girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? The thing is. <laughs> The thing is, if a girl for the first time would come in a relationship with me, and if it would come to this moment, you know, to this moment of love, they couldn't leave the room for like a week, you know what I'm saying? They need like a roll rollator, you know, like the one, you, like on the chair, you like, pzzz, left, pzzz, forward, true story. 
The mid is going to be taken down slowly but surely. Uh, 875 command points. Actually, men are kind of holding themselves for whatever reason. Ingmar is now pushing from the top side. There's also army around the bottom side. The mill is going to be taken down very soon. Almost level 2, but it's not going to hit level 2. The snow trolls are tanky and beefy. They can even trample down the enemy Rohan spearmen. That's why you needed those tower guards. You have to get them on the field. And I think even though everybody, Ghost Boy, the cousin from Falcon, was saying, hey, Falcon doesn't like Ingmar. He sucks with Ingmar. But... Trust me, Falcon's best performance of the day is with the Engmar faction. Sheng Shlong, yeah. They were like, I was like, you know, I was born like that. You know what? It's like a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. The good thing is I can go to the, to the toilet from the living room. You know, I don't need to go inside the bathroom. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, does he have snow bites? Uh, he can go for the snow bite. Ah. I mean, you cannot take down a fortress from Engmar. You know, Engmar is the one faction in which you cannot go for a sneak attack. Beautiful Falvin is incoming, but we have 15 power points almost for Engmar. You know what that is supposed to mean? It would mean that we will get the chance to see the mountain giants for the siege on the fortress. It's a, you know, from, from Big Schlong. It is also a big responsibility. The mill is going to be taken down very, very soon. The giants are available. A zero G fire. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. 675 command point, 625. <laughs> Thank you. Matkap. Oh, you are more the killer, more the killer. Thanks for the, for the 100 pity bomb. Matkap shanks ha Cheer ha donation. Ha. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. You know, um, guys, I need to tell you one thing. <clears throat> I am the fist of with the witch king's voice. You know, um... You guys know in, in the world, especially many, many years ago, I don't know if this is still the case, but if a guy would have lots of girls, he would be like a hero, you know? But if it would be a girl who would have a lot of boys, we already know how to call these girls. You know what I'm saying? Right? I mean, how you call a girl with many, many boyfriends? Not a good thing, but if a, if a guy has many, many girlfriends, he's like a hero. Right? And one time a girl asked me, it's like, hey, hey. You know, the, I, I'm literally imitating the voice. Hey, you know, when, go, when boys have many, many girlfriends, they are always heroes. But I when girls have many, many nice. boyfriends, they are always bitches. And I said, hey, listen to me, girl. When you have a key that can lock up every freaking door, then it's a genius I am the key. But if you are a lock and every key is passing to you, then you are a horrible door. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the girls are really, really, really weird. Oh, the siege. Oh, I mean, this might actually give a turnaround possibility. Did he even use repair yet? Uh, yeah, he did. But the giants are gone. The fortress One is still remaining, and Man of the West has enough key, army to defend this fortress for now. Many keys. One key opens many clock. In, it's the master key. Yeah, true, 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 true. That's what I wanted to say, but you know, I want to say a lot. But uh, at the end of the day, I say only ten percent of that what I wanted, what I wanted to say. You know? <clears throat> no, no, I'm, I'm joking. You know, obviously, obviously, I'm joking. Gondor will protect these lands. Gondor protects his lands. But that was like, you know, back in the day. When you would, as a boy, would have many, many girlfriends, you would be like the hero in the, in the friends club, you know, everywhere. How did you do that? How was the night? How was the evening, you know? 625 command points. And actually, Engmar is dropping down to the same command points like his opponent. The, the thing is that this fortress is so low that if Engmar gets the chance to commit against that, he might make something happen. Erobole is on cooldown, Rohirrim somebody is on cooldown, but Ralinko has been used on this massive army. If he throws on the field, throws down throw what is shooting with rocks on the soldiers. Two power points collected. The farm level two is going down. That's minus 75 command points. He's going to be command points kept now. The whole of the king's man might be the target. He has tower guards finally upon the field. They are also dealing more damage. If they clump, they will take down the whole of the king's man in a few seconds. But he has a second one. He has a wolf down level two. That means he has still enough production buildings to keep the unit production going on. Five power points collected now. He might go for... I mean, he cannot really go for anything here, right? At this point, you can also go for a 10 power point, like a lone tower special summon, but 
I believe the Lone Tower special summon makes only sense if you have actually ranges recruited in the first place. <laughs> I know what you mean, Leto. But again, you know, back in the day when I was 18 years old, she was like 17, 18 years old. Oh! Double, double leadership, double buff from Frozen Land. Oh, that's it, right? That's it, right? Yeah, sure, yes, sir. The Fortress, nice one. Remember, that's the only possible way Engmar can get double buff. You have to pick up the Frozen Land from your spellbook, which is a leadership. It's very underrated. It cannot be covered by Tinted Land nor by the Alvin Wood. I mean, he is still in the game. He didn't lose yet, but... I don't think he can turn this game around anymore. With only 450 command points and this far away from the 5000, I don't think he will be ever able to replace the fortress. I don't think so. He was able to deal great economical damage in return, so Engmar is dropping down to 450 command points only, but the power points usage is actually key here, right? As we are talking, the power points from Falcon are reloading slowly but surely. He is also collecting more and more power points, but during all this time, any Brandy has no access to his power points, nor is, are his power points reloading. So even if he somehow magically finds a shenanigan and manages to replace or rebuild the fortress for 5,000, by the way, his power points need to start reloading from the point in which they were before the fortress was destroyed. We bring swords from Lorien. Falcon throwing for the second time, yeah, Falcon, but, but this one is actually, like, I think this one is going to be extremely hard to be thrown. I think, I don't know, man, it's hard, because the thing is, yes, but look how many units he has on the field. He has 525 out of 650 versus 248, so there is no way Engma can match now with the spam, as we are talking. The only thing he needs to do is survive, right? He's, he doesn't need to send units forward, I believe. Just defend yourself, gather a huge army, that's... He has a builder, yes sir, he has a builder. So he has a builder, definitely. Does he have the second builder too? Or does he have only one builder? He has even a second builder. So he's in a good spot. Like the worst thing that can happen is if you lose your fortress and you have no builders, you know, that's then, then it's GG, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's feeding at this point. Almost eight power points collected. Orc summon is going to be available very soon. So Orc summon, Frozen Land, War Chant. I mean, only Vorchan is a huge advantage already, you know? Power points win games, yeah. Power points are just too impactful in PvME games. Especially in Rise of the Witch King, with this many additional summons for each faction, if you cannot summon them early, uh, later on, you will have such a huge disadvantage, that's crazy. Parami is mounted, by the way, as the Knight of Gondor, using disguise. Looks actually pretty cool in the HD edition, look at that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. It's, it doesn't mean that you will lose the game when you have no fortress. It's definitely possible that you can win games. But if the opponent kind of plays it a little bit smart, it's hard to win. But he doesn't really do a lot about the advantage he has. He's going to drop down to 400 command points now. He has only 156 out of 400 available command points. He's broke. Paramium is almost going to be level 6 for leadership. And even though he has no buff, he will have constant leadership, which is... Oh, the Faramir getting sucked in. Faramir, the captain of Condor. Don't kill the person who is trying to show his quality. Don't kill him. But he's gone. Faramir is sent to the graveyard. I, come to command. I mean, that's a nice one. Warchan plus Felvin had to be invested into that. But it's okay, because, again, as we are talking, any Brandy has no chance of reviving his Faramir anytime soon. And he has now the Orc special summon available, which can be either used defensively or offensively. Frozen Land is also available. 10 power points collected on top of that. He has 17 power points in total for the Man of the West player. And look at the money. He has 2,000 in the bank. It sounds crazy, but I had doubts like a minute ago. I had doubts that any Brandy can manage to rebuild his fortress. But after seeing what I've seen in the past minutes, I changed my mind. I think he has indeed the potential <laughs> and the possibility in long terms to rebuild his fortress. And the thing is... Once he has rebuilt his fortress, he will have barely, or maybe by the time he will have definitely the 25 power point uh, power spike. Which means he can use the 25 the second he has the fortress up on the field, use earthquake and win the game. 
Just like that. Soldier battalion at the ready. I mean, that's unbelievable. 19 power points. You fool. No man can kill me. No man can kill me. Uh, no, Engma actually went for the snow trolls. He went for the snow trolls, but he lost the uh, wolf ten now, level two. It's only dude, it's unbelievable. I cannot I don't know what to say, bro. Orc summon, okay. But here's a barracks, right? No. Does he have a barracks somewhere else? No, that's uh, it's a level three building. With the witch king's voice. Can he take it down? I mean level three building, so tanky though. Look at that. I mean, they have no buff, they have only uh, leadership. The giant summon is almost back up. But the builders, they can, you know, in the worst case scenario, uh, Andy can just keep building more and more barracks. That's it, you know? 14 power points collected. But, uh, yeah, he was barely able to destroy the level 3 barracks. That's all he really did with... You know, summon of the frozen land and also the orc summon. He won't be even able to finish off the level 2 farm, I'm assuming. Gonna be close though. Trample already with the Gunner Knights. Why don't you trample? Trample. If you don't trample, you will lose it. Okay, in the last possible second, he did it. Was close, but not close enough. That's in total 20 power points usage to kill only one production building. He's down to 350 command points only. He has barely any I units remaining on the field. We have in total 725 command points for the Man of the West player. He keeps spamming units now. He's going for level 2, level 3 buildings to make them tankier. So this way they can also act like a tower, shoot, and be almost, you know, indestructible. The Siege Vortex. Andy is like, who needs Fortress in 2022? He's not even trying to rebuild, <laughs> rebuild the Fortress. You want to finish off the game without fortress. You want to go for the siege vortex. You want to go for the siege, and you want to attack the fortress very, very soon. So look at the mini map. Can you? Can you? What is going on? How is this even possible? Engmar had such a huge lead. I mean, he was up to 900 command points while Man was down to 500. But I think Falcon can play very good in the early mid game. Really, I mean, he's doing a very good job in this early mid game. But when it comes to finish off the game, when it comes to go for the winning move he is struggling he is struggling a lot to get to this point a lot the white the blight the fell wind and now everything is gonna turn oh oh okay now the whites they gotta kill those tower guards kill those tower guards before they can kill your giants oh my goodness the giants are hitting like a truck though the thing is does but he has a barracks and he has a siege vortex so even if he loses the barracks, he won't be defeated. I mean, Falcon doesn't know that, right? He doesn't know that, I think. Now the question is, how well is the Siege Vortex? They are dealing this Trollstone Trower. Did you see how much damage it dealt to the Trebuchet? Like, you literally need to hit it 10 times. Okay, this was dealing much more damage. It's kind of random, I guess. Because the first attack was dealing almost no damage. What the heck? Boom. Like, I believe you need, like, four shots. To kill a trebuchet. Four shots. Uh, Galadrim warriors. The mountain giants, they can keep going, by the way. They can also take down the barracks. Which will only leave the siege vortex. But he's building yet another barracks. The giants did actually a good job. They were dropping down the Man of the West player to 500 command points. Look at the power points department. He has 25 power points in the bank. These trebuchets are unprotected. Kill them already, dude. Kill them. Get... Gundabad orcs and send them forward. Oh, Build the troll and wolf then. You need to get troll and wolf then if you want to turn your you know trial master units. That comes the snowbind to save the fortress. It is less than 50% HP mark. Less than 50% HP mark. But the thing is, those trebuchet have zero protection. And they cost a lot of money too. They cost 600 each. And losing them is painful. Really extremely painful. The archer range will be saved. I mean, at this point, Falcon is looking and searching for every single production building which can be somewhere on the map. But as the builders are remaining on the field, Andy can hide them legit everywhere. 28 power points, but what's the matter if you cannot use them? He has also money problems as we are talking. Losing the level 3 farm was quite painful. And now, Falcon is 350 command points, yes, but keep in mind that power points are more and more impactful the later we go into the late game. Master. 
Alvin Warriors coming from the inn. Because 400 each though. Archers are defending this farm. That's good and important. The fortress is so low. Like, I'm telling you, like two or three more shots from two trebuchet. It's going to do the magical trick. And the fortress is going to be gone. And that would mean the end of the game for Falcon. Like, losing the fortress now for Falcon would legit mean he would lose the game. He's so behind, even with the fortress. Imagine how behind he would be without it. Trebuchet has zero protection. Frozen land is going to be placed in between the barracks for leadership and for slowing effect. The siege forex is going down slowly but surely. Gondonites are coming to clean up those orcs and keep the trebuchet protected. There's only one. Is this one going to be enough? Can this one trebuchet finish off the game? No wolf then. No cavalry. Only infantry. I mean, Orc Summon is still on cooldown, but it's going to be available very, very soon. The barracks, uh, the Siege Forks has been taken down. I mean, here's an Archer range here. Double barracks here in the middle. And level 2 farm here and here. These two, these three farms are very important for any Brandy to keep going. So losing these three would mean 225 command points. Would be lost. And he has only one single trebuchet. And you see he's spamming barracks now. Two barracks in the middle, Archer range, barracks here. You want to make sure that he's always having at least one production building that can keep him alive. The siege is beginning once again. The one trap will need definitely some time to take it down. And once again, Andy is doing the same mistake and leaving this trebuchet unprotected. Orc summon will be used offensively. They have also the war chant plus the leadership from the frozen land. The Gondonites are getting slowed down. They will get, get they will get killed. That's what it is. They will get killed. And they will now hit very hard. The Trebuchet will be taken down. Without dealing a lot of damage really. And now they can deal also a lot of damage. He's splitting them. He want to take down the barracks. But I think taking down the barracks. It's, it might sound crazy. But I don't think that's the play. I don't think that's the play guys. But imagine you have 35 power points in the bank. But you cannot use them. That's the problem. You cannot use them. Like, if he would get the chance to use even only Rallying Coal, this would mean the end of the game. But you see how impactful the fortress is. The Archer range is going down next. There, there is a Siege Forex, there is a Barracks. The thing is that he has those untouched farms and they are giving him, providing him with so much resources. That's the reason why he's still alive, by the way. The mill is going to be taken down eventually after dealing with those Extrovers. Those Extrovers, they seem to be stronger than Galadrim Warriors, by the way. They will... It looks like they will win. Yeah, they will win this fight. The orcs. They have not much time left anymore. They have like 20 seconds left. But is this going to be enough time to find this level 2 farms? That's the big question. Where is the cavalry? The, the stable is not even up on the field anymore. So at this point, Andy is just tunnel vision focus on the enemy fortress. But every single time he's trying to do stuff, he's sending them out unprotected. At least get some infantry, Gonda soldiers, something to back up, back up those trebuchets. Right, the trebuchet the snowbind is, is going to be used for the second time. You see, during all this time, the snowbind was used. It's up again. He can use it again. And he's Soldier investing 600 35. into every single one of these trebuchets. And now, the level 2 farms are getting destroyed. That's the game breaking point. Like, losing this. Look at this. He's dropping down to 400. And Engmar was almost to catch up. He has 17 power points in the bank. After the Blight. Blight is almost back up. The Summon Giants is going to be almost back up. The Fortress now being gone for Andy Brandy for a really long time. Maybe instead of going for the Siege Forex. Maybe instead of going for this many trebuchet. I think he would legit be able to rebuy and rebuild his Fortress by now. And mistakes over mistakes over mistakes. He's so focused on the enemy um, on the enemy fortress that he loses these things which was which were keeping him alive for the for the majority of the time. I mean there are two traps coming now. Two traps. 425 command points. But man is dropping down to 225. Dude, I'm telling you guys, this guy has legit. Not even, not even money to buy a farm at this point. The fortress might be this time going down. No. Does he have giant summon? No, it's on cooldown. 
Go for a white summon. I think go for something. Good, then you are about to lose your fortress. There is no reason to not go for a white summon. You can summon the whites now and try to kill the trebuchet. Because if you lose the fortress, you cannot use power points anyway. You will never be able to rebuy your fortress. Just summon the whites already, guys. I come to command. Dude, that's the last hit. I am the yeah, he's the going for the whites, but he couldn't even summon them. Too late. Too late. Too late. And the fortress is gone. What is going on? But I think Falcon is still the advantage. 200 command points versus 375. He has this one barracks that keeps him alive. There's only one single barracks. But the Engmar has also only these two Hall of the Kingsmen. That's also only what keeps him alive. I mean, he has another barracks here, by the way. I take it back. So Andy is hiding those uh, barracks in very different spots. He has one at the top side, one at the opposite side of the map. So just in case he might lose one of them, that will force... Falcon to move all the way to the bottom side to so destroy this one as ready. well. While the barracks, nah, there comes other barracks from Falcon, so he's gonna do the same. He's trying to. <laughs> Dude, now no more power points for the entire game, by the way. I don't think they can ever build up the fortress again. They can never do that again. One of the all of the Kingsmen is gonna be taken down. 250 command points for men, 350 for Engmar. Engmar has a bit more money. He has level 2 mills, two of them actually. These are the only level 2 mills. They, are, they don't know what is going on. You see more and more mills coming up. The builder, if you lose the build, it's going to be painful. The level 2 mill might be taken down slowly, but surely. This one is this one is going to go down, yeah. Or this is going to be close. Only one of them is going to be remaining on the field. And the Hall of the Kingsman level 2 is going to be protected. But the builder has been taken down. In the meantime, Engmar is rotating from the top side. Where is the builder from uh, Andy Brandy, though? Did he lose the builders too? No, he has also one builder. He's trying to build more and more farms. Running around like a wild man. You have more? <laughs> yeah, he's like, of course he has more. He has Hall of the Kingsman here, Hall of the Kingsman here. But does he have a builder though? Does Falcon have still a builder left on the menu? That is the golden question. Remember, that he has still double Hall of the Kingsman. He's getting them to level 3, which is very smart. Very, very smart. But this one is a little bit too late. Like getting this to level 3, it's not going to work out. This is the last remaining barracks from Andy Brandy. The last remaining barracks. And, you know, Falcon is scouting everything. The Hall of the Kingsman level 2 is going to be taken down. But he has still two more, right? He has, there is no way he can destroy them. Uh, yeah, I think Falcon lost the last builder. He lost the last builder. Soldier Battalion at the ready. Yeah, he lost the last builder. But it's fine. It's fine. Trust me, it's fine. Now you might say it's not fine, but I think it's fine. Like, he's gonna win this game now. He's gonna win this game now. You see the money from the one out west play, dude? He has no money. He has no money. And he, very smart move from Falcon, getting all these levels uh, to... I mean, he's gonna recruit now some Black Numenorians. Very, very smart. The Hall of the Kingsman might be taken down slowly but surely. Or maybe it's not fine. <laughs> maybe it's not fine. I don't know, dude. It's so quick, close. I don't know what to say. Yeah, no more builders for Falcon. He has level 2 mil here, almost down. He has a level 3 mil here, full HP. It's going to be able to shoot. This Hall of the Kingsman is going to go down. We and that's the last there. remaining barracks. There is a builder. But if the builder runs it down, if Falcon, if any brand loses the builder, it's also over. He has no money. Falcon has money, but he cannot use the money. That's the problem. The Black Numenorians are taking care of the soldiers, though. They are murdering those soldiers. 20 power points collected, boys. But the game doesn't end. The game doesn't end. Now, there are two possible situations in which Falcon might be able to kill the builder, which would be an instant victory. So if he kills the builder, it's GG well played. And if he can't kill the builder, the question is, how can... Uh, Andy Brandy break through this um, Black Numenorians. How can he do that? That's the big question. Because the money is pointless. As you can see, he has money in the bank. All he can do is recruit. He cannot even recruit many more units because he will be command points kept eventually. And he has more command points too. You see, he has 50 power points, but he cannot use them. And he has no money. And Falcon has no builder. Very strange situation. And he is broke, right? He can, like, Falcon doesn't give him the chance to recover. He keeps killing those farms every single time. If he loses the level 2 mil, that's going to be painful. If he loses the level 3 mil, that's going to be even more painful. The Black Numenorians are ignoring this. 
Oh, they are they are coming though. They are coming, boys. We have in total one, two, three, four Black Numenorians. And they are much, much stronger than Gondor soldiers. So quality will go over quantity. Oh, the builder will be found! Now the builder has been found. Losing this builder. He's killing the barracks. He's killing the barracks. He needs to cancel the barracks. If he loses the barracks here, it's over. He knows where the builder is. That's it, boys. The builder. The builder. These are level 5 Gundabad orcs. Run. Yeah, but, but, but you don't let him go now. You just keep chasing him permanently. And that's will, that will grant you the victory. All you gotta do is kill the barracks. Kill the barracks. And GG's gonna be called from any brandy. And that's it, boys. What a fiesta game if I've ever seen one. 2-1. And we, the series is still not over. We're gonna jump now into the game number 4. Okay, so we have the red dwarven player Falcon at the bottom side versus the blue goblin player and the brandy at the top side. Shanks' best maps are not in the map pool. Uh, what a tournament. Yeah, the thing is, what is what are the best maps? You know what I'm saying? We have actually many, many new maps in this map pool. And they might not be the best maps, but they are new maps. And they, they are not used, <laughs> overused yet, you know? Open new mat. Oh yeah, sorry. I actually forgot about uh, new bats. Thanks for reminding me though. Let me open them real quick. So, and Falcon was the winner. And now you have the chance to bet for this game, boys. The game number four. You have two minutes time from now. And what is the opening here? So, two mineshafts, Hall of Warriors. We gotta keep an eye on the builder. The builder is actually building a mineshaft at the signal fire on the right side. On the other side, we see only one tunnel into the Goblin Keef. And the second tunnel will be already built offensively. And the build is moving downside. Hmm. And... Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. We will see. Like, I, I like the idea about this, what he's doing. He want to capture this one as soon as he can. This way, he will be able to get a lot of information. He will be able to see a lot from the map, which can be very important against the Goblin Faction. We have a Pikeman opening now, and then Guardians right after. So Pikeman, they will be definitely used to creep. So we gotta keep an eye on this builder. He will be building a mineshaft next to the troll there. And there is also Golem lurking around, looking for the sneaky little hobbitses. The Warc layer will be taken down in the middle of the map. In PowerPoint wise, we have Rallying Coal and it's nothing been chosen yet for the goblins. So what is the goblin player up to? He has only one single goblin key. Hmm. That's a very interesting build. Nah, he's gonna build a fissure in the middle of the map. Also a very interesting build over here. For any brandy. Oh, he might be able to steal the money. Let's see. Let's see, that's gonna be close. The goblins are faster. It's about dropping. It's about dropping. Oh, Red Dwarf is saying, you ain't taking any money from me. Everything is mine. And we have already, we know, we knew that dwarves are <laughs> greedy creatures. They don't want to share, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly what happened. And, oh, look at that. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> look, at, look at the camouflage. That's what I'm telling you guys. This is like a Haradrim design, right? I'm telling you, if you build like a Haradrim palace on the spot. For example, you are playing Mordor here. You build a Haradrim palace right here. It would not be even seen by your opening. It would be like a perfect camouflage situation. Watch this. Like a, the same color like a Haradrim palace has, you know? Okay. Uh, half throw Swartman though. Half throw Swartman are not the same like the Goblin Warriors. The mineshaft is going to be found, but before it can be taken down, he will be able to get those guardians out. Now the question is, how much damage can Falcon actually deal to Andy Brandy? He has to deal a lot of damage to him, because Andy has not enough units defending himself. Right, he has only one goblin warrior here, and that's it. Oh, he has half throw swordman. Never mind, I take it back. Oh, the builder will be in trouble. Builder will be in trouble, boys. I mean, you cannot run away from the Goblin Warriors. That's not possible. He's trying to build it and get inside. Maybe he can do it. Maybe he can do it, but maybe you cannot do it. I don't think you can do it. He's going to be able to get units on the field. Now, just catch, chase this builder. I think that's what you're going to do. Now, nah, he's going to build yet another one. He's doing it all the time, but I think this is not going to achieve too much for dwarves. I don't think this is going to achieve too much. 
because he loses so much money off that he builds them losing them right away without them giving you any money but in the meantime look at the minimap there are so many untouched tunnels for the goblin player he was able to destroy the mineshot in the middle of the map too i don't think this is the right call for dwarves the builder might be getting in safety but for what price the mineshot is going to be taken down once again he keeps doing a good job killing those mineshafts the second they are built up it means dwarves cannot you know snowball and there is the counter attack but we have battle wagons up on the field now there is another mineshaft here which can be used to get this battle wagon nearby i think you need to get the battle wagon because rallying call is going to be on cooldown very very soon and if you want to keep your unit strong you need the leadership bonuses next level please building a palace there yes sir would be actually quite oh beautiful triumphal is incoming the battle wagon can actually do a phenomenal job here there is zero counter no half throw pikemen no spider links nothing like that we have 550 command points for goblins and 400 for dwarves but this command point differential can be changed in a single second but half throw swordmen they are so incredibly strong they will take care of this enemy pikemen and half uh, guardians in a few seconds the battle wagon though, doing a good job, but only one single battle wagon. Oh, that's an important mineshaft, that hurts. There is a mineshaft, and there is a mineshaft. I think the, the goblins know about this match, matchup. Not matchup, <laughs> mineshaft. The question is, how you want to kill this battle wagon? That, that's the golden question. What is this? A spy the whole expansion. But he doesn't know that goblins don't really care that much about this area. Right? They don't really have to care about this much. Because he has so many tunnels. It's a huge map. That's why macro is the key to victory in this map. As we are talking, Andy has both these signal fires under his control. Remember, the goblin faction can also buy for just 500, like a cave pets upgrade on the fortress to see a lot what is going on on the map, you know? So he's able with look how this is you know this is how much he's able to see you see how much vision control he has in the middle of the map like he's able to see all this area completely uh, until this spot really you know like that's more than 50 percent of the map and dwarves are kind of blind look at the vision control from dwarves they have zero vision control they don't even see this tunnel here Okay, so level 2, if he was able to save them. Now, um, the mineshaft is going to be found. There is a spider pit coming up. So it's a very interesting placement of those, of those buildings uh, for goblins. Fissure in the middle, spider pit offensively. Very, very interesting. And he has only one single tunnel around the fortress. Even if he loses that, it wouldn't be... I should have dodged dwarves. He's going to call it GGY. I mean okay yeah it, it is what it is you know gg well played anyway 3-1 but the last game was actually quite fiesta the first game was quite fiesta